All right, here's our top five Mike Babcock prick job moments. This video is dedicated to the few hockey fans that are still sticking up for Mike Babcock, calling what happened to him cancel culture. I hate cancel culture more than anybody, but I got a newsflash for you. This wasn't cancel culture. This is what we call karma. Babcock has done some nasty things to some people in the hockey world, and his karma is now blossomed. Coming to number five, we got Mike Babcock sitting Chris Chelios at the 2009 Winter Classic, which was in Chicago, Rugby Field, his hometown. Chelly played two shifts in the first period, and then Babs just went and sat him down for the rest of the game for no apparent reason. Now, Chelios said the trainers low-key fill his water balls up with beer, and then he proceeded to just sit and chill on the bench. Number four, Mike Babcock uses rookie Mitch Marner as a prop to publicly shame his players that weren't working hard enough. By the way, Leaf fans, do you remember how excited we were when we signed Mike Babcock? It was like we bought the Stanley Cup. This thing should have came with a warranty. So basically what happened is Babcock had Marner make a list of who Marner thought the least hardest working guys in the team were. Babcock went that and shared that list on the TV in the dressing room for all the players to see. Like, I'm sorry, but that's like some sociopathic behavior. Babcock did eventually apologize, but not because he was sorry. He apologized because he got caught. I'm also going to lump in the Jason Spezza incident with number four. So in 2019, Jason Spezza signs with the Maple Leafs for peanuts, happily takes on a fourth line leadership role to try and bring his hometown team a Stanley Cup. And how does Mike Babcock repay him? By sitting him on opening night in Toronto against Ottawa, his former team, because according to Babs, Toronto had to work on their penalty kill and Spezza just wasn't a part of it. Number three, Babcock's arrogance denies Mike Medano a milestone moment. In 2010, Mike Medano signed with his hometown Detroit Red Wings to do a victory lap. It was a tough year for Medano. He dealt with a lot of injuries, but towards the end of the year, he was healthy enough to play. And in the final game of the regular season, he was sitting on 1,499 career games played. And in a meaningless game with Detroit already solidified in a playoff spot, Mike Babcock sits Mike Medano denying him of what would have been his 1500th career NHL game. Every time I hear this, I have to double check Hockey DB to make sure it's real because it doesn't sound like it is. Apparently after this happened, Nick Listrom lost his shit and chewed out Mike Babcock, which says a lot for the perfect human being who never lost his cool. And we get to number two, our most recent no-no, Mike Babcock violating the personal privacy of his Columbus Blue Jackets players and asking to go through their cell phones and throwing the photos up on the TV in his office. Realistically, Mike Babcock should not have been hired by Columbus in the first place. There are 20 other coaches that could have gotten that job. The NHL has to stop recycling the same old boys club behind the bench. And finally, number one, Mike Babcock verbally assaulting Johan Franzen in a 2012 playoff game against the National Predators. Toward the latter half of Babcock's tenure in Detroit, he had a bit of a reputation of picking on guys that were quiet and he knew who wouldn't talk back. Eventually, a lot of those guys left and he was left with Johan Franzen as his whipping boy. Apparently, the psychological abuse toward Johan Franzen was an ongoing thing. It wasn't just an isolated incident. Speaking of that incident in the Nashville series, Chris Chelly was after the game called it one of the worst things he'd ever seen. Not only was Franzen dealing with concussions, we also found out later he was dealing with some pretty severe depression. It was really sad how his career ended. I never understood why Franzen became Babcock's whipping boy. Like, if it wasn't for Johan Franzen, some Red Wings fans would tell you they might not have won the cup in 2008. He was an absolute machine and scored some massive, massive goals in that playoff year uh, that helped Mike Babcock win his only Stanley Cup. Speaking of Stanley Cup, up, Darren McCarty says the Red Wings also should have won in 2009, but uh, Mike Babcock's coaching decisions held the team back. I think it's safe to assume Babcock's career in hockey is probably over, unless he wants to go be a timekeeper in the ASHL. They're always looking for timekeepers in the ASHL. Thanks for watching, guys. Drop a comment, hit the follow button, and remember, whatever you put out into the universe will come back at you as Mike Babcock is now finding out.